Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates. Now, we've got a Q&A for the Talon and the Shrike, the new Tavaran Light Fighters. A lot of questions out there. How, how are these ships going to work out? CIG has provided some answers. So, like we used to do with the Q&As, we're doing it again. We're going through them, commenting on it. So, without further ado, take it away, Minion. Why, thank you, Minion. All right, let's begin the Q&A for the Asperia Talon. Question one. Where does the Talon fit within the hierarchy of stealth ships compared to the Eclipse, the Prowler, Saber, and Raven, and Hornet Ghost? Answer. The Talon is not a dedicated stealth ship like the Eclipse and is positioned as a ship with stealth features. So it will sit between the Saber and the Ghost in the examples listed above. <clears throat> so, I mean, not, I mean, it is kind of a stealth ship, but it's not, you know, if you look at the uh, the Hornet Ghost, the Hornet Ghost is a you know it was a dedicated medium fighter that got reworked to kind of get stealth features into it, whereas the Saber was built from the ground up as being a stealth ship. They're putting it some you know somewhere in between those two. I mean, it, it it's it's if, when you're a glass cannon, it's probably going to be a strong thing to have. But if you're thinking about doing outright stealth missions with it, you're probably going to get more performance. If being unseen is your primary goal, the Saber is better. And technically, the Saber with four size threes kind of fills the slot that this thing proposes to take. It's kind of like a cheaper Saber, I would call it. A discount Saber. All right, question two. How aerodynamically capable is the Talon, both in-engine and realistically? The Talon handles better in atmosphere than it looks at first glance due to its low weight and relatively aerodynamic wing profile. Just don't look at the nose. Not entirely aerodynamic there. All right, moving on. Um, is there an incoming missile mechanic rework <laughs> that justifies a light fighter with 24 size 3 missiles? Um, <laughs> answer, there are plans to not only bug fix, but improve the missiles and countermeasures in upcoming patches. How many times have we heard this before? To give a much deeper level of gameplay rather than the current fire and forget approach. Or the fire and just forget you fired it approach. Um, that's a that's a great sentiment, but once again, we've heard this many, many, many times before. You know, the missile mechanic is something we've been trying to get right since 2014. Six years later, we still don't have it. Um, so take that one with a huge pinch of salt. All right, the brochure indicates bespoke weapons. Uh, will there, will we be able to take the gimbals off and put on the two fixed size four guns onto the Talon or fixed size twos onto the Shrike? What weapons components on each model are bespoke and fixed and which can be swapped? The wing mounted weapons that come with the Talon are Asperia recreations of Tavaran weapons, much like those found on the Prowler and can be swapped out with other standard weapons, good. Uh, the missile racks on the base Talon are swappable, however the bespoke missile racks on the Shrike cannot be replaced, though the missiles themselves are customizable as usual. So no real shocker there. I mean, it carries its missiles internally uh, when you're talking about the Shrike, so it would, it would obviously be uh, God, I hate to use the word. It's so overused, especially around CIG. It would be a bespoke solution to the problem. It wouldn't be something that you could swap onto any other fighter. So, no real surprises there. Uh, next question. Jeez, which one is this? 
We did question. That was question four. This is question five. In terms of maneuverability and agility, where does the Talon fall in the current list of small fighters? Compared to our existing light fighters, it currently sits between the Arrow and the Gladius in terms of maneuverabil uh, uh, maneuverability. Though this could change during implementation, as could every other ship that we fly. This is why you have to be careful when you're looking at these things. Remember that everything is up in the air and there are no finished ships in Star Citizen. All right, question six, uh, question mark, sure. Um, from, the uh, from the brochure, while the unique countermeasures derived from the original specs found on Cabal 3 uh, create radar decoy signals to leave aggressors fighting ghosts, does this imply a new type of electronic warfare, E-War, that will be coming with the ship, or is it simply flavor text? Uh, as mentioned above, we have plans for deeper missile and countermeasure gameplay, well, we've heard that before, uh, which extends th their to their use in electronic warfare. A few other ships are planned to utilize similar decoy countermeasures, yeah, the Vanguard Sentinel, we've known that for years, alongside flares and chaffs, including the Prowler and the Vanguard Sentinel. So we know about decoy missiles and uh, one of the other missiles that we know about is the hacking missile that allows you to make direct contact with another ship systems and then start, you know, kind of um, hacking into them directly rather than remotely. So it'd be like as if you were at that location rather than trying to do it through a signal. It's making it easier to hack and easier to do much more devastating hacks on an enemy ship though. All of that stuff has remained flavor text over the years. Poor, poor Harold. Um, question seven. The description seems to say it's lightly armored, but the brochure lists medium armor. What should we expect? The Talon is lightly, well, just say Buccaneer. Just say Buccaneer. The Talon is lightly armored like all light fighters. The brochure listing medium armor was a mistake and has been corrected. <laughs> oh man. All right, question eight. Will the Talon or Shrike have a bed? No. The cockpit escape pod <laughs> looks like it has space for more than a seat. Does the Shrike have any interior space? Yes, of course not. Don't. Don't go building a ship into something it isn't. Um, is the role of the... Oh, sorry. Question nine. Uh, is the role of the strike intended to be a stealth missile ambusher? If so, how many missiles can it lock and launch simultaneously? The strike's role could be described as that and compared to non-missile focus ships, it will be able to lock and launch more missiles when revised... Uh, when the revised missile locking system comes online in a future patch. Uh, when will that be? Um, ultimately, the exact amount will be controlled by the ship's computer and can be upgradable via blades. Though the dedicated missile ships will support more by default. That, I mean, that, I, you know, with the Talon, there's kind of... Um, you know, with the Talon, it doesn't really seem like it's all that great. You know, uh, I could see areas where it could be strong. I could see areas where it would be weak. But the ability to just spam a shit ton of size three missiles with the Shrike, especially if you have a relatively stealthy ship and they don't see you coming, that's much more promising to me. I would say that in my mind, sorry, <clears throat> in my mind, the Shrike looks like the stronger of the two. All right. Question 10. The brochure hints at having air shield tech, or is this for an interior for a unique entrance? entrance exit method or was it just mentioned because it's also a Tavaran ship it's it is partially mentioned due to the Tavaran nature though the cockpit does seal itself during ejection with air seals what 
I mean, the cockpit is a separate module. Why would you need air shields to seal it? I mean, it's an enclosed space that you sit in that doesn't make any sense. That really doesn't make any sense. Like, unless it, like it's an open cockpit design with air shields, like, I, or maybe if it's breached, like there's a bullet hole somewhere in the cockpit and it's, it seals it with an air shield. I don't know. But that's kind of, I don't know. Who writes these brochures anyway? Um, question 11. Will the Talon have the fa phalanx shields on release? At release, it will have the same shield behavior as those currently equipped on the Prowler and the Defender, which feature phalanx shields to, in their design. So 100% ballistic absorption and massively increased shield hardening ability. There are plans to push the abilities of the phalanx shields further, but no additional details are available at this time. So, hey, by the way, guys, phalanx shields are really good. So um, if you want 100% ballistic absorption on your ships, better buy one of the ships we've listed above so you can get those shields and put them on the ship that you want. That's 100% ballistic absorption is a total non-starter. And that shouldn't exist in the game. The whole reason why we have ballistics is because ballistics penetrate shields, though because the shields, they do less damage. But they still allow you to score a hit. The drawback is that you have finite ammunition, right? That's how this balance thing works. And now we're bringing in a shield that just gives 100% ballistic absorption. It just happens to come on some of the most expensive ships that you would have to buy in the game. That is is a cart of steaming bull demonetized you know what i'm saying yeah that's what the hell question 12 will players have any control over the cockpit after ejection good question um the ejected cockpit is not controllable like a parasite ship and should be thought of more as like an escape pod that it fires out of the ship for a period of time in a predetermined direction so yeah it just kind of it just has like a quick little thruster that just blasts it maybe out of the battlefield and then you just wait for rescue or maybe get out of it whatever but it you know it raises the the question like this is you know okay it's a good idea especially in space here you have a picture of it it's especially in space this is a good idea but here's the problem does this thing come with a parachute does this have a parachute built into it? We've been talking about these ejection seats for years. We've been talking about using, you know, fighters in atmosphere for a long, long time. Yet no one has come up with a parachute. If you eject in atmosphere, what is this like? What is this going to do for you? You're just going to plummet to your death. It would almost be better to just have a straight up ejection seat at this point because it doesn't really do anything for you. In space, its, its benefits are dubious. In atmosphere, it's just, you know, you get to wait an extra long amount of time before you get turned into, like, space paste when you hit the ground. So, the fact that everyone keeps neglecting the idea of parachutes when we have ejection systems, we have atmospheric flight, now we can eject these things in atmosphere, and no one's, like, no one's really moving that ball down the field, that's kind of troubling. All right, question 13. Will the escape pod functionality be included in the release in December or will it be added later on? At a minimum, it will function like other ejection seats except forward firing instead of vertically. When the ability for ejection pods to be fully set up is available, the Talon and other ships will have them implemented. So what you're saying is we're not really sure that the ejection pod is going to work. So we're just going to make ejection seats on this fighter that fire you forward. And then the pod, the whole pod ejecting will come in potentially later. Why don't we just put ejection seats on everything at this point? Everything with like a traditional fighter like cockpit. Like why, why is this even a thing? <laughs> and you know, 
instead of worrying about, oh, this ship should have an ejection seat, why don't you just put damn parachutes in the game and, and, and do something smart rather than overcomplicating something that doesn't need it. You're inventing a problem that doesn't need to be solved. Every ship should, every fighter at the very least should have ejection seats. Bigger ships have escape pods. This should have an ejection seat. It's, it's not rocket science. All right, final question. How will the Talon differ itself from other fighters? Uh, compared to other light fighters, the Talon splits the difference in firepower between a stock Gladius and a Buccaneer, favoring fewer but larger weapons. Agility-wise, it's between the Gladius and the Arrow. It is often very much user preferences between these ships or very much user preference between these ships so it fills a gap in the lineup that promotes choice in game it doesn't really fill a gap in the lineup it just thickens the choices it just gives you more options oh do you want a gladius do you want a buccaneer do you want an arrow you know those are the most maneuverable arguably fighters in the game currently and so they're basically saying here's another one down at that low end which is i mean it's good, but ultimately, here's the big problem with Star Citizen is, you know, and I've made this case a lot of times, fighters have limited usability in Star Citizen. They have much more usability in a game like Squadron 42, but as, you know, we keep saying, you know, we keep funding Star Citizen, it goes into Squadron 42, hopefully it benefits Star Citizen down the road, fingers crossed that everything is transferable and everything works, because there's a lot of cool shit that we see in the previews. But the problem is, is that we're putting so much energy and so much time into basic fighters, and realistically, it, it's almost like we're we're building so much into a part of the game that eventually most players are just going to evolve out of and never look back and that is where we're putting most of our efforts there's a lot of there's a lot of cool fighters in star citizen already and you know i'm not going to begrudge anybody buying this you know you get what you're you're going to buy what you want to buy and you know you're not going to listen to me either way but we have like honestly we have too many fighters in the game and as people get into the persistent universe which is what we're funding they're going to start to find that fighters aren't the fight the ship that they end up flying the most the ship that they end up flying the most is going to be their cutlass their freelancer and up you know things like the connie hopefully things like the corsair in the near future stuff like that that's where a lot of people are going to be really kind of getting their work in and so i just I really don't I don't see the point in another fighter and my suspicion is that there's we're probably gonna run into a, like a gang of people in squadron 42 that used Tavaran fighters and that's why this is here it's like oh it's the Tavaran gang da -da 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 -da. let's get them you know that's why this is here because otherwise having one or you know having one cool Tavaran ship is fine but you know there are plenty of ships in Star Citizen and we have a massive massive work debt in terms of ship building out and you know completion in the universe because once again there are no finished ships in Star Citizen all of these ships are still going to need a once over and maybe in some cases a twice over once the game kind of solidifies and when we realize universally what works and what doesn't work you're probably going to see a number of ships that need to go in for a second or a third rework some of them have already gotten considerable reworks and they're still not finished and so every time we bring out a ship like this you have to remember that you know, when CIG says, oh, this ship is done and this ship is done, none of them are finished. And there's a tremendous work debt being built up on all these ships that is one of the things that I think low key troubles a lot of players is that it's this kind of, you know, almost flippant disregard for, you know, the work that still needs to be done. It's just like, oh, well, let's just add to the pile. You know, let's just debt finance everything, you know. It, 
it's a cool ship that the Shrike, you know, kind of coming up with like, 24 missiles and what's the potential of missiles that you can lock, the stealth capability, I really like that. As an ambush predator, I dig that. But it has to be said that, you know, every time we come up with a new concept ship, we're just adding more work to the pile and it doesn't seem like the pile is getting all that much smaller. You know what I mean? It, it seems like we're adding more to the pile than we're taking away. So maybe it's time when ships like this come up, maybe it's really time to start thinking about let's build it as a variant of the, you know, whatever. Let's build it as a variant of this. Let's build it as a variant of that. I mean, it's a cool idea, it's a cool concept, but arguably, I would have rather seen a fighter built out of the, like, I would have rather seen a heavy Tavaran fighter built out of the Prowler rather than this. My two cents. Anyways, I'll give it back to you, Minion. I think that, um... You know, when I look at all the new ships coming out, of course, all of us, we're just regular people. We get excited when we see cool new spaceships. It's perfectly natural and perfectly normal. But I have to admit that, you know, when I talk to players and I talk to the guy who owns the Banu Merchantman, talk to the guy who owns the Endeavor, who owns, you know, whatever ship that we just... That, that seems to just be forgotten in the pile. And then I see something like this coming up. It, there's a certain amount of, I don't know, like a, almost a guilt that I feel. It's just, you know, cause it's just, it's kind of like everyone's having a party and then this person is just never invited or always forgotten, you know? And I, you know, when we look at ships, once again, when we look at all the ships and CIG says, hey, we've gotten all these ships into the game. Well, let's be honest. Let's be completely honest here. Really, no, you haven't. You've gotten the baseline version of that. And there's a whole bunch of work that yet needs to be done for that ship to be fully fleshed out. In the case of a ship like the one that I'm flying here, the Caterpillar, there is so much to the Caterpillar that is just not implemented. The command module that I'm flying the ship from is supposed to be able to be detached. All those cargo pods that you see along the right side, those are supposed to be removable and replaceable with different components, but none of this is materialized. I mean, and then we have all these ships where so much has not materialized or so much is not working. Have you ever tried to use the, like, the armor or ammo or the gun racks in your Vanguard? Don't work, do they? Most of your storage closet, closets in a lot of ships are just kind of placeholders. You can't really put anything in them, you know? There's a lot of work left to be done on a lot of the ships that we have. And I mean, I just, I feel like it, it you know, I mean, honestly, I feel like we've, we crossed the line about like two years ago. Probably even earlier than that, some would argue. It, it's time to stop with the new concept ships, and it's time to really concentrate on fixing, you know, what we got. Some people like to say, you know, especially recently, well, this is the biggest year that Star Citizen has ever had. So much, you know, so much new money coming in. Oh my God, it's so great. You know, everything's rosy. Well, I mean, that's kind of a skewed perspective because you have to remember that we had more or less like an early year anniversary sale in June with Invictus right like that was basically an anniversary sale and we're gonna get another one this year so obviously there's a big push to get money in to finish the game but there's you know people thinking that oh this is the best year it's no it, that always happens on an anniversary sale I think that you know we do have to realistically think about this invisible pile of ships that need work, need finishing, and need things done for them. And we need to be a little bit more responsible. You know, and I, well, not we as in players. I think it's on CIG. This one is entirely, you know, it, this is their doing. 
and they're just they're making it worse for themselves because when you really when you stop and think about all the ships in game and how much stuff on them is unfinished or you know broken I'm even even here on the caterpillar the new magical hallway of mystery when you're trying to walk over to the catwalk from the cockpit you know all the little graphical problems that have come up with the ship I see things where they're talking about eye cache and server meshing and how close they are and that gives me a lot of hope but when I look at the ships themselves and the amount of work that's left to be done and the ships that just have received no work and are are years and years old versus a ship that really we didn't need that's just been pushed to the front of the line as a you know I'm I, I'm speaking for myself here, but I don't like that. I, I really don't like that. Anyways, Talon q and I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. So, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.